Okay, so part two of the Mercedes EQC video. It's pouring with rain outside, but we've brought it indoors today and lined it up directly next to an Audi e-tron 55 Quattro, a Tesla Model X and a Jaguar I-Pace. So these are all premium electric SUVs that are four wheel drive, all cost north of 60,000 pounds when they're new. But what we can do here today is give you a really good direct comparison between all four of these cars. It's pouring with rain outside, but we've brought them all indoors and we can show you around them in a little bit more detail. Now we have done a video with the e-tron X and the Jaguar I-Pace comparing their efficiency and charging. So do check out our other videos for that. And we'll try and put a little link up here if we remember as well. So how does the EQC compare to its direct rivals? Well, let's find out. Okay, let's just run through quickly what we've got here today then and how they stack up um, in terms of pricing. So uh, firstly, the Jaguar I-Pace, um, available new from sort of 60,000 pounds and upwards, but available used under 50,000 pounds in the mid 40s and even the lower 40s for some of the lower specification models. Um, it's proven to be a popular car. It's been around for a couple of years now and I like it. The Tesla Model X has been with us since late 2016, early 2017 in the UK, but you can't buy a new one at the moment. The new one with a slightly revised interior and some other modifications is coming out. But actually the size of it, the exterior design and the practicality inside doesn't seem to have changed much. So we'll be focusing on that quite a lot today. You can't buy a new one, but used ones are available from about 50,000 pounds upwards. There is a performance version of this, which is definitely the fastest in the lineup, by the way, under three seconds for a car like this. And it's the only car in the lineup which can have more than five seats. So six and seven seat options are available. Audi e-tron 55 Quattro, this is a 2019 car. I've used this myself for a while. There are other videos on our channel featuring this car more in terms of its fantastic charging speed and its range and efficiency and what I do like about this car and comparing this to a Tesla. So again, new, these don't come cheap. These are all kind of north of 60,000 pounds. On the used market, um, they can be had for about 50,000, sometimes just under 50,000 pounds and upwards. Um, then we have the Mercedes EQC. Starts from 65,000 pounds new, not too many on the used market yet. So again, typically 60,000 pounds upwards. This is an AMG uh, model here with its 80 kilowatt hour battery. And we've just done another video today where I give you a bit more opinion, what I think of this car, more of a review about this car on its own. So do check out our other video for that. And we'll see if we can put a little link in the description above. So today, let's see if we can focus a little bit on the kind of practicalities of these cars. What's the space like inside? What can you get in the boot? And what we like and don't like. I'll probably bring in some of the staff to get their opinions as well. So it's not just mine. And we'll see how they all stack up against each other. It's all about choice these days. Which one of these cars would work for you if you currently drive a Range Rover, Land Rover, Porsche Cayenne? Don't go and buy another diesel SUV. There's great electric SUVs out there. Which one of these is going to be right for you? Well, we'll show you what we can and let us know in the comments below at the end what you think is going to be the best car. So Jaguar's low and sleek, bonnet scoop, raised arches there, pop out door handles. And then at the back, it's notably different. It's got a very sleek and shallow line here with a hatchback here. So and then you've got that square back end there. So I think it's a pretty sleek, handsome design and not too big for day-to-day -day use in the UK. Then we've got the Model X, clearly the biggest one. This has got the great big 22 inch alloys on it, but you can get 20 inch wheels as well. Normally with chrome trim here, this one's been de-chromed and this is what the new versions will look like. So they'll no longer have the chrome around the windows. Of course, one of the most distinctive features about the Model X is the Falcon wing doors. So that makes them a little bit more practical, including if there's another car parked quite close. But if you're parking in the garage, can be an issue. And then it swoops down and then they have a spoiler on the back. The P100Ds have the active spoiler, or some of them did at least. Um, this one, and as with most of them, is a fixed spoiler. So the e-tron 55, I think looks the least electric of all of them. At the front, it's kind of got a grill much like any other car. And I think to most people, they wouldn't realize it's electric. Um, it comes along, it's got a slightly squarer back end here compared to the X and the I-Pace. So it still slopes down at the back. But you can also get a sport back edition, which has got a much more sloped roof line. Looks pretty good in my opinion. And the EQC is based on the GLC, but it's a smart, sophisticated car. 
It does stand out on the road, especially if it's light bar at the front as well as at the back. Uh, traditional SUV style, based on that GLC, so just a slope on the back windscreen here, but a fairly square but rounded rear end. The Mercedes headlights are excellent, matrix LED, and it's the only one with a light bar across the front here. It does make it stand out. What do you think of it? Audi e-tron can come with matrix LED headlights as well, and they're also excellent. The Model X has LED headlights, but they're not matrix. They don't highlight those segments in the road like the others do. So they're good. Maybe the new one next year will have more functionality in that regard. And Jaguar I-Pace can come with matrix LED headlights as well, and they're also very good. The rear lights on the Jaguar I-Pace are fairly conventional with just an LED strip in them. I think the tail lights on the Model X usually stand out on the road. They've got quite a large illuminated area LED. The Audi e-tron, big light bar across the back, and when you lock and unlock it, it does some nice little animation stuff as well. And the EQC also has this light bar going right across the back. And actually in person, when, like, when you stand in here, you can see these kind of illuminated veins. It's much more 3D. I think it looks pretty cool. Front of the Jaguar I-Pace, although it's physically the smallest car here, it actually still feels pretty nice and open in here. The dashboard kind of slopes away mm. from you. So it actually... It's got a nice rangy feel about it. Comfortable, spacious, mm. good view at the front. Um, yeah, it's a nice place, actually. I really like it in here. I think my criticism possibly is the user interface. It's probably the most complicated of all of them. Although with the Audi, that took a bit of getting used to, but maybe we'll cover that a bit more separately. But the front of the Jaguar is actually a nice place to be and feels more spacious than you'd think. Yes. But, there is one but, there's no heated seats. Not no. on this one. No. You can get HSE, I think, then does. This one's an SE, but it doesn't. Um, but well, on a car of this price, this was still uh, 70 something thousand pounds new. Yeah. You would expect heated front seats at least to be a standard thing. Um, but other than that, very nice place to be. Front seats are the Model X and um, nice and wide, spacious, armrest, armrest there as well. It's a good, comfortable place to be. Of course, it's much more minimal than the others. Mm. You've got this big center screen. You can have, because there's not three buttons, there's not many buttons at all, you can have multiple driver seat memory positions. So you can set up like 10 different people to sit in this car. But unfortunately, there is no memory settings for the passengers. So if you have different people with different preferences, they have to adjust the seat each time they ride in a vehicle. Could I find be, that useful, yeah. yeah my daughter yeah. versus yeah. against lays back, my daughter sits up. So yeah, there's no it. option for passenger seat memory. It's sort of um, frustrating because it's probably an easy software update for Tesla. They could do it. Maybe it will come one day. I think yeah. it will. Um, Love this open feel screen. in the cabin. Yeah, yeah, so this has easily got the kind of biggest areas feel. And again, clearly the widest because I think it's the widest car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the front of the e-tron. And it's a very nice place to be. Premium materials, I think you'll agree. Mm, it feels yeah. nice. If you like leather, this feels like very nice leather indeed. Now, this has got adjustable thigh support, something the Model X lacks. Now, most cars that have adjustable thigh support, the, the base extends out and it leaves you with a nice kind of crumb collecting groove, doesn't it? Yeah. I can't think of a good way to describe it. Whereas on Valet the e-tron, it doesn't. If I have a look at this, when you extend the seat base, it just extends, this kind of rolls out so you don't have that groove. Um, so it's a nice place to be again, very comfortable. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Nice premium materials. I have found when driving this car, charging your phone's a bit awkward it's a funny place to put it i'm not a big fan of this center console thing really mm -hmm. anyway but it's a bit awkward it seems it all low bit. down doesn't it there it is and unlike the x that we were talking about before there's memory settings available for, for the passenger, passenger as well as well as driver oh and you can adjust your side bolsters so you can more adjustable seats on i think these. it has the yeah. most adjustment in the it seats does. and bringing these side bolsters in or out i think it's a really nice touch mm. and definitely sets us apart very comfortable car to be in i have Indeed. to say all right, we're in the EQC now, and it's probably the most confined, is it? I don't know, similar to the iPace, but it does seem to have quite small doors, so, mm. and it's got a kind of sort of smallest windscreen. It feels a bit more like letterbox view yes. here. Lovely materials, though. I love it. I love this. I love this, and yeah. the carbon fibre. It just has such a luxurious sort of look to it. Lots of keen on the black plastic here. Oh, no, I like scratches. Oh, good. That's all right, then. <laughs> and we've got electric seat adjustment with some really good crumb collecting tray here. So. You've got a biscuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you eat a biscuit, mm. it collects all the crumbs in that little groove down oh, there. Oh, no, Rich. Look what's happened. Mm. You just simulated 10,000 miles worth of uh, crumb eating. That's just... Imagine how much is in my beard. My camera's looking at Joe's crotch. Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, you can see, lovely place to be. 
I don't recommend eating. It just covers in that groove and then it's going to go down the back of the seat. Well, mm. other than that, nice place. Yeah. Mm. Gintz is crying now. We're in the back of the Jaguar I-Pace with Serge in the front. He's six foot tall. And actually, I've got pretty good knee room. You've got plenty of knee room, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty good leg room. The seat is a little bit low to the floor. So the, my legs here are not touching the seat. And even yours aren't, are they, Joe? Yeah. No. Uh, the floor isn't quite flat either. There is a lump in the centre section there. Headroom's okay here, but you do have this intrusion from the roof line here. Let's see how we go for space with Serge next to me. Can we get three adults in the back of the eye place? Nice ambient lighting in the door there, that looks good. Oh. How are we doing, Serge? Here. So, um, Luckily I'm slim. Yeah, you could give me a lift home from the pub, but uh, you wouldn't want to do a long journey as an adult in the, in the, in the middle seat at the back. There's middle base is firmer and I'm obviously sat I'm higher up. Once we've lost the lockdown pounds, Rich. Uh, yeah, I could do with a little bit of that, so, all right, I knew you had to get it in there. Uh, so the back of the Jaguar I-Pace, four people, fine, in the car, not in the back. Uh, three of us in the back for a short journey. Yeah. Agree? Yeah. Okay, the next one. We're now in the back of the Tesla Model X with Serge again in the front seat in his seat in position. Of course, with these big Falcon Wing doors, loads of easy access. Now, this is comfortable. Full yeah. size seat. I've actually got a bit of seat adjustment here for myself as well, so I can tip it back a little bit. It's nice. This is a six seater version, and you do need the post seats to be able to do that. Although with the newer sevens and a five seat, you do have a little bit of recline option on the back. So, Serge is going to get in the back as well. I'm being a five seat. I don't have anywhere to sit in the middle here. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the dog would normally go, but I can slide into the back here. And in the back here, yeah, there we go. I can get in. Um, it's actually not too bad. If you have the six seater, you can actually kind of stretch your legs out down the middle, which is pretty good. Um, there's the seven seaters with the three seats across here. It is easily the most spacious and comfortable of all of them. So this is the back of the Audi e-tron and this is a pretty comfortable place to be. Headroom's good, uh, nice and open here. So this is the one that has the least amount of kind of uh, pillar intruding next to my face here. And the seat is a good distance from the floor, so I'm very, very comfortable behind Serge here. Right, Serge, get in the back. In the middle though, this is where I think it's gonna be a problem. So it's not quite a flat floor, but very nearly, but this center tunnel actually comes quite close. So there's not a great deal of leg room here. Um, and in terms of width, well, again, it's, it's okay, isn't it? Um, it's probably, is it better than the Jaguar I post? Yeah. Yeah, but then here. this makes a real difference for you. So I it think is, the yeah. Is winner, I'm very actually. tight there, to be honest. So in a way, it's pros and cons, but the seat is a good distance from the floor and I just about have enough headroom. There's a recess here, but the recess is a bit far back. So I can, <laughs> if I sit like that, I'm okay-ish. Yeah, again, four people very comfortably, five, bit of a push. Now on the back of the EQC, and as I'm sat here, this is pretty good. What I note in this is, Carl, that my, there's a gap between the front seat and the floor, so I can move my feet around here, which is pretty nice. Um, also, in the other, in the e-tron and the i-pace, you have to kind of lift the headrest up to be able to use it, because otherwise it's just leaning the back of your shoulders, whereas these, you don't need to do that. That's good, a little bit dark along here. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable, it's not bad, but, Serge, if you come and join us, there is a very large tunnel down the centre of the car here, like it has a massive prop shaft. And do you know what I can tell as I'm talking? There's kind of an echoey sound, isn't there? Yeah. And I notice it a little bit in the e-tron. I think it is using a microphone and then duplicating the sound so everyone in the car can hear you. Possibly. Perhaps. Don't know if that's a technical fact, but anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, so here, I think it's probably the tightest what do you reckon yeah, i'm actually not even yeah. next to you there no. i'm also sat over you there's a big console here so now i've got nowhere to move my feet or my legs my knees are a little bit tight i do have headroom still so it's okay for that well actually I'm, um, I'm, now i've moved over yeah and you're right close to that now yeah. as well so for three adults in the rear probably the tightest do we agree yeah agree yeah yeah i mean you could again Give me a lift somewhere up the road, but a long journey in this, I think I'll struggle a little nah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. The rear door is a bit, the opening is quite small. I was like, eh, yeah, it's a smaller opening to get in. Good point, sir. Good point. The Model X is right for that, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, um, yeah, okay, but actually the tightest in the three. Jaguar comes with a Meridian sound system, and then you can get an upgraded Meridian sound system. 
But to be fair, both of them are pretty good. Sounds good, good sound quality. Sounds very reasonable, nice sound. That you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you. The Tesla Model X standard sound system is oh. pretty good. You can get a high fidelity sound upgrade, which then adds a sub, and that's very good. The Audi e-tron can come with a B&O sound system, which is pretty reasonable. This one doesn't have that. It's distinctly average. You'd expect better as standard. This EQC has a Burmester sound system, and it is pretty epic, actually. We think it's very, very, very good indeed. EQC, solid. But no soft close. The e-tron is the only one with wing mirrors that have a camera. Mixed opinions on these. I think wing mirrors are easier, but the cameras are just cool. Door closure, solid. And closes very easily as well. <laughs> There's no soft close, but you sort of don't really need it. It closes on its own, the last kind of spring. Very good. Tesla Model X is the only one with a pillarless door. Yeah, it's not as solid as the others, but it's the only one with soft close and it can do this. You can put it there or you can put your foot on the brake or you press a button on the screen and it will power close for you. The Jaguar I-Pace has got quite a strong spring so it closes really easily and solid. The only thing I don't really like is this, uh, where the pop-out handles, the back of it is this kind of black plastic and that feels a bit cheap to me, but it closes nice and solidly. Jaguar I-Pace, kind of the narrowest point, which is this plastic trim here, is sort of 96 centimetres. The boot itself is a little bit wider at just over a metre. Back to there is 98 centimetres. And we've got a height with a parcel shelf of about 45 centimetres. Model X, sort of narrowest point, is just up here really. And we've got just over a metre there. Down the floor here, about metre seven there, slightly narrower here between the wheel arches. We've got about 99 centimetres. Here, this is a six seater, remember. Uh, we've got 114 centimetres to this load edge here. And I'd say kind of load height here, if we pick this reference point here, is about 42, 43 centimetres and then increase into about 63 centimetres there. But we'll put some big stuff in in a minute. Let's go straight to the e-tron. So, width is actually kind of narrower here, so I'm going to measure that. Um, but they're still just over a metre actually, it's pretty good. Let's measure here, just over a metre. We've got a luggage net in there, but we've got just over a metre. And to this point here, we have 35 centimetres or so. And then to this point here, we have about 66 centimetres. The Mercedes EQC. So, narrowest point here. That's actually just over a metre, you know, it's not bad. And then once you're in here, it's actually quite wide, deceptively. So, one metre, nine centimetres. Not bad. I can see in the videos, what's this in inches? Well, you have to Google that one. Uh, that is just under a metre to there. And then to, to there, we've got about 73 centimetres. There's not really a kind of point to measure here, but we've got 30, 40 centimetres, coming up to about 59, 60, and about 66 going across the top there. Hope that's useful. Okay, so I've got a very big box here. Let's see if this fits into any of these cars and if it does, how easily. So this box is 117 centimetres long by 84 centimetres wide by 65 centimetres high. Will it fit? Will this fit in the Jaguar I-Pace? No, it's just restricted by that curve at the uh, roof line there. So that's a no for the I-Pace. Okay, Tesla Model X. Okay, the Tesla Model X, six-seater. Now, we've got the height, nice easy loading flat floor, but those second row of seats, they don't fold down flat because this has got the post seats. In a five and a newer seven-seaters they do, but not in any of the six-seaters. There is one thing you can do though. 
Now we can move those seats forward, so let's try that. You couldn't have anyone sitting in them, but let's move these seats forward. So there's no passengers, but will the box now fit? Genuinely don't know. And now will the tailgate close? Yes, so it fits in a Model X, as long as you don't have passengers in the back. But then you wouldn't have passengers in the back of this anyway. So, okay, fits in a Model X, let's give it a win. Okay, this is the Audi e-tron. Now I like this, you have a handle there, releases that seat, handle there, releases that seat. But you're obviously left with this parcel sheet, which you have to lean in, which is a bit awkward. And then you have to bring that out. And then this is a kind of extra load kind of dog guard net. I'll take that out as well. Let's see if the box fits. Hand surge. Will it go in? It's about the height there, isn't it? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's a little bit tight. Hmm. So just limited a little by its height there. Do you know if I reckon I pushed that enough, I probably could, but I don't think it will because the seats, excuse me, it was the box, it wasn't me. The seats don't quite fold flat. Um, so yeah, isn't quite gonna go into the Model X, but it's close. Sorry, e-tron, but it's close. Okay, the EQC, I think, I don't know, I don't think it's gonna go in, but right, let's get this shelf out. You have to just push the end in and that comes out and again, just pop that somewhere. Now, this also has releases for the seats here, which is good. Pretty flat, pretty flat. Let's now try the box. What do you think, sir? It's just gonna go in now that low, low flat load area there, but no just doesn't have the height. So, the only one that passed that test is the Model X. Yep. The e-tron was really close. Then the EQC, then the Jaguar. Yeah. Agree? There we go, big box challenge. The one thing you can do with the EQC is take the floor of the boot out. Against behind the camera, loves Mercedes, is desperate to make this box fit. But, although it gained height, actually it's in through the hatchback now, there's a metal bracket there, which obviously supports that floor but that means we can't get the box in, still can't get it in. So unfortunately, it is a big box foul for the EQC along with the others except that Model X. Okay, so that's about all we've got time for today on this. So let me try and give you a quick roundup before we have to pack things up and go. So uh, the EQC, it's a very interesting car. It certainly has that luxury element to it. Feels very nice to be in. It's nice and refined and quiet to drive. And it's also kind of quite dynamic. It has quite a good feel on a, on a sort of faster country road. So I'm impressed with that. It is a little bit smaller inside than some, but it's a great car. Um, be good to see maybe a bigger battery option, um, but with 200 miles of range and a reasonable charging speed, it's certainly plenty for most people. The Audi e-tron, by comparison, um, again, it can top 200 miles with its 95 kilowatt hour battery. It is a big, heavy car and it feels luxurious and it's nice. It just doesn't have the dynamics in a twisty country road like the EQC, but I do love it. It's probably one of the most refined, comfortable cars there is. And of course, the trump card for the e-tron is its charging speed, incredibly fast, quicker than all the others. So it's a great car for that. The Tesla Model X is just a great all-round electric car. It is big, but as you can see, it's justified. It's spacious, seven seat option, six seat option, five seat option, a performance option for under three seconds to 60. It's a great all-rounder, and with the Tesla supercharging network in the UK and all around Europe, it just makes those long distance journeys easy. If nothing else, it's easy, and they are available with bigger batteries, 100 kilowatt hours for range, which even in the real world is circa 250 miles and even more if you're careful and sensible. So more range and easiest and a great around package. It's brilliant. That's why I still love the Teslas, to be honest. So the Jaguar I-Pace, um, I think especially in the market is becoming really good value. It's got a bit like the EQC, a nice sort of turn of speed and quite a good dynamics on the country road. So it can be a bit of fun as well. Um, a good all-round package, if not the biggest, but it's very, very nice indeed. So I have to say all of these, I think, do make great cars. It's great that there's a big choice of uh, electric vehicles and especially for the SUV market out there now. So I think for most people, if you're changing your SUV, you really need to consider these. It's always down to personal taste and preferences, but they're all worthy of consideration 
different ones are better at different things, of course, like any other car, but they're all brilliant cars. Thanks for watching. By the way, um, don't forget to also subscribe to our Facebook and Instagram pages, and we do lots of story posts on there as well for all our day-to-day -day stuff. But for now, thanks for watching. Let's call it a wrap. Goodbye. <laughs>